Hello everyone, I'm Dovlet and in this video, we'll be talking about Describe Engine Instruments. Teaching point 1, describe the oil pressure and oil temperature gauges. So let's first talk about the oil pressure gauge. So oil, oil pressure gauge is, it uses the unit's PSI, also known as pounds per square inch. Okay, so what it does is basically it indicates the oil pressure supplied by the oil pump to lubricate the engine. Okay, so obviously the engine is just a lot of metal, so it needs oil within the engine to help lubricate it. So it, you should check that oil pressure gauge immediately after the engine has been started. And there is a couple few um, different things that the oil pressure gauge could tell you. Okay, so the reading should adjust to the oil warming when you start off the engine. And this could take up to 15 minutes for it to get to the green area to, for the normal operation range. If the pressure remains high uh, after 15 minutes, that means that the engine is not properly lubricated. Okay, so there's different uh, effects of incorrect oil pressures. Okay, so the first one is high oil pressure. If the oil pressure is high, that means uh, the exhaust will be smoky and the piston heads and valve seats and a lot of other parts within the engine will be badly carbonized. So that's basically bad things will happen to the engine, you don't want that. But somehow, contrary to popular belief, low oil pressure is actually even worse than high because that means that there will be no firm of oil between the engine's working surfaces, okay? so. That means that the engine will not be getting enough oil and that will lead to the metal within the engine to rub against the metal which will make the main bearing wear out really quickly which is basically really bad for the engine for like it will like vastly lower how long the engine should work for right so it will break down really quickly not exactly what you want so the next stop is oil pressure uh, oil, oil temperature gauge sorry Oil temperature gauge is, looks like that. So again, this is like the normal range. So it usually indicates the temperature of oil in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Okay, so this one is used as Fahrenheit. So I, in an ideal situation, um, when you just start off the engine, the pressure will be high and the temperature will be low. And as, as the engine starts up and the oil warms, the uh, these readings should approach normal readings okay so the temperature will go from low to medium and the pressure will go from high to medium okay and that's the first teaching point next up in the second teaching point we'll be talking about the cylinder head temperature gauge okay so the cylinder head temperature gauge it looks like that it again indicates the temperature of one all all one or all of the engine heads okay so it depends on how many engines you have um, and basically this helps show whether or not how effective your engine cooling system is now obviously if it is very inefficient it will be way too hot and your engine may overheat and extremely high cylinder head temperatures mean that the engine will go into overload and overload is pretty obviously a bad thing it will lead to detonation and it will lead to pre-ignition which will eventually lead to engine failure. In case you don't know what detonation is, detonation is abnormal rapid combustion due to the inability of fuel to burn slowly. Okay, So it just like combusts really quickly. And detonation is really dangerous and expensive which will cause high stress on the engine parts and overheating. Okay, And pre-ignition is basically the premature ignition of mixture due to the glowing carbon particles. Okay, So if it is sometimes confused with detonation, uh, detonation and because pre-ignition is often experienced when attempting to start a hot engine and it will result in a backfire okay so basically these two things are pretty similar but they're what they're the same as is basically those two things will both lead to engine failure okay so in short you don't want these to happen either teaching point three is all about the tachometer and the tachometer looks like this, okay? So the units it uses is rotations per minute or RPM. So the RPM, basic, the tachometer basically indicates the speed at which the engine crankshaft is turning, okay? So you can see these are, let's just say, 1,500 times. So 1,500 times 
per minute rotation. So that's pre a lot of rotations per minute. And not only does it show you like this engine crankshaft, but also as you can see right there, it also has it is also able to record the engine hours of operations, right? You see right there, uh, the numbers right there. So basically it helps to do two things at once. It helps you do record the engine hours, but it also shows you how fast the engine is turning. So there's the tachometer color code. So these are pretty straightforward. You got like the green, which is operation range. So these are like how fast it should be turning normally. You got the yellow, which is the caution range. So if it gets to here, you should probably slow it down because it like long term uh, operations in this area is very uh, bad for the engine. And if you reach red, it is really, really bad and you should immediately turn it back. And anything above that will cause serious damage to the engine. OK, so. So there is two. Uh, that uh, like in general types of aircraft that has tachometers right you got the fixed pitch propeller aircraft which only has one tachometer to read the engine power okay so like the faster the engine turns uh, the more engine power it has the other type is controllable pitch propellers okay so for those ones you have the tachometer which shows you the rpm setting as controlled by the propeller control but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is how much power is produced by the engine. That is showed by the manifold pressure gauge, which is that one shows the power produced by the engine. OK, so now let's talk about a good segue over to manifold pressure gauge. The manifold pressure gauge is looks like that. It shows you uh, it, the it shows you the pressure, air pressure in the engine intake. OK, so it uses the units that's pretty common in aviation pressures uh, inches of mercury hg you can see right there hg uh, manifold pressure gauge uh, so again this is like the green area that's like good and then the yellow is caution the red is bad and it basically just indicates the normal operation ranges right there and like the limits are right there and if the engine is not running like if you just like you're just you just got in the plane and the engine is not running the reading on the manifold uh, pressure gauge will show the current atmospheric pressure okay and if if the manifold pressure gauge is like going too low that means there might be some carburetor icing okay so that's bad you want to be solving that either immediately landing the plane or you know fixing it before you go on another flight okay and if there's excessive manifold pressure, that means like the pressure is too high. That means that there will be high stress on the pistons and cylinders. OK, so that's also bad. You also want to fix that by going to a technician mechanic, whoever you get to fix up your plane and just fix that problem. Right. And and there will also be excessive temperature, which will again damage the pistons and valves. So you basically just if you see these going too high or too low, you just want to go back land the plane and just get it fixed before anything else bad happens okay so that's basically the end of the video right this is describing engine instruments if you found this video helpful be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel again i am dovelet and i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next video